family, welcome to another exciting edition of A Shot of Wrestling, The Interviews. If you have not done so already, follow us on all forms of social media at A Shot of Wrestling on Facebook and Instagram and Shot of Wrestling No A on Twitter. You can contact us via email at inbox at a shot of wrestling.com or dial it up 619-343-3005 and leave your comments on a shot of wrestling hotline. Now we say it time and time again that wrestling brings us together and today is no different today. We are joined by CZW wrestler, trainer, and owner, the Lariat God, DJ Hyde. Welcome to a shot of wrestling. Thanks for having me on. So let's get right into it, man. Before you got into the business, what was your life like? Basically, in high school, I was a football player. I was an All-American football player. I went to Penn State University on a scholarship. I blew out my right knee and ankle and nine other ligaments in my uh, my right leg. Mm-hmm. Um, I had surgery. I started working at banks. And uh, anybody knows the, the real me, I grew up in Delaware. It's pretty much like the banking capital of America. It's where most major credit card corporations uh, were headquartered. And, uh, you know, that was kind of my life. Uh, I was a big sports fan, uh, very, very big wrestling fan. And, you know, I, at an early age, I looked into wrestling schools and there weren't many back when I broke into wrestling. And uh, most of them were like $5,000. And $5,000 now is still a lot of money. $5,000 back then was astronomical. Oh, yeah. um, and, and, and And just, you know, by a conversation and happenstance, I uh, I just happened to end up, you know, getting in professional wrestling out of, you know, a very lucky conversation that I had. So, uh, I mean, other than that, you know, typical life. Yeah. Now, a lot of that information you could get from your Wikipedia. Now, we got into a brief conversation <laughs> about Wikipedia before we get started. What on Wikipedia surprises you about yourself? Um, I'd have to look at it because to be honest it looks like it changes every other week uh we actually make a lot of jokes uh my debut date is wrong there uh it basically has my debut in ccw not when i started wrestling you know there are things like i said like i think we joked before i got on the show that uh jimmy lloyd is my son um <laughs> you know i don't have any children and, and, and there's just a lot of stuff that like i've seen it change people write a lot of jokes you know, it's Wikipedia. Anybody can edit anything at any time. Uh, so Jimmy's not your son? Uh, I, uh, no. Oh. oh, I saw that I don't own CZW anymore. That was a new one. Oh, that wow. Rumors. Saw, like, yeah, like I saw a couple of weeks ago that I am the former owner of Combat Zone Wrestling. Um, there's just a lot of, uh, I think my birth date on there was wrong at one point. Um, and I think that has been right and wrong at times. Um People have over-exaggerated how old I am and, and even when I'm born. Uh, and like I said, I don't really comb through that stuff because, to be honest, to me, it's not really relevant. I'm not one of those guys who has to go on and, like, everybody needs to know the exact truth and facts. And, yeah. like, to be honest, I mean, people are just going to write what they want on my Wikipedia page. You know, uh, I mean, it, it's like that anywhere else. It, I mean, you could go on there and modify it, you know, today, actually, as we're on this call and just be like, yeah, DJ Hyde, the worst interview ever, or something like that, or he's just such a you know bad person. Well, so we're just it, getting started. We're just getting started, so uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, I mean, if I if I see it, I know where it's coming. Of course. <laughs> uh, now you've lived quite a life so far, and you've had a lot of great accomplishments. A lot we've been able as fans to see through professional wrestling. Is there any advice you would give yourself as the DJ Hyde of today from the DJ Hyde 10 years ago? Oh, 10 years ago. Um, the DJ Hyde 10 years ago was a lot different than I am today. I, mean, I think the best advice from when I started wrestling that I should have followed is the first rule of wrestling. It's keep your ears and eyes open and your mouth shut. Believe nothing of what you hear, even less of what you see. I think if I would have done that or at an earlier age, I don't think uh, – some of the reputation I, reputation I have and some of the downfalls I had, attitude and, and way I carried myself at a younger age was uh, different. Uh, probably 10 years ago, I would have been like focused on business. I, I care. Uh, I always have cared a lot about the people in professional wrestling. Like, you know, not just the people that are my friends, but even the people that I do business with. I, I generally don't ever want to see anybody down, even if I'm mad and I'm like, you know, screw them or whatever. 
you know, I, I don't ever want to be that guy. And I think now I'm kind of over that. I'm kind of, all right, you got to, you got to do what's right for you and what's right for business and, and make things work within the best of your abilities. And if people want to bad mouth you or people want to say things, just screw them. Who, who cares? You know, like I'll give an example. I don't know if you know who Gary V is or Gary Vanderchuk. Um, mm-hmm. He's one of the guys that, you know, is like a mentor now to me. Like he's a guy that I follow. I, I read his books. Uh, you know, he's a guy that like, I, I will literally go to, you know, a seminar that he's hosting. He's not in wrestling. People probably don't exactly know who he is, but um, yeah, I just really stopped caring about what people think specifically in the last couple of years, you know, just been like, all right, whatever. If you're not on board with what I'm doing, you know, focus on that. And if you're not with me and then, okay, man, no, no issue. Go do your thing. When I was about 10 years ago, I was more concerned about like my relationships with people and, you know, if, if there was like a negative thing, it would bother me. So I think that would probably be my best advice. Now, you mentioned your reputation. What do you think your reputation is? Oh, I'm the boogeyman. Um, I mean, that, that's actually a joke that we, we, uh, we tell. Um, I teach my students and, and people in professional wrestling, perception is reality. The perception on me is negative for whatever reason. Have I made mistakes? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I've done some boneheaded things and, and things that like, you know, I probably should know better, you know, and, and I've done stuff like that even within the last year that I'm like, this was dumb. And I yell at people for doing this. Why did I do it? Yeah. A lot of it is exaggeration or what people believe the character is, you know, specifically in a company like CZW, where CZW, whatever you may think of it, people know what we're doing. People, we have exposure. That, you know, all around the world and, and they watch what we do. You know, if, if something happens in CZW, it gets reported, it gets noted. We're not just your next mom and pop independent. And I think that like, there are times where when I went in and said this and this and done this, I was very like, no, I have to go. I have to cross lines. I have to be this way. And I probably shouldn't because the world is changing. You know, things you could do five years ago in professional wrestling, you can't do in 2018. And so on. I mean, social media has changed so much. You know, you got to watch what you say. I mean, if you follow me on social media, uh, I am very dyslexic. I, I have an issue. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm not on Twitter that much, because, like, I'm afraid that I'm going to spell something wrong, you know. And it, it just looks a certain way. And the perception is so negative at times, and, and I think they associate that with CZW, you know, and... and and it really, it hurts the business and it hurts, it hurts just the industry. And, you know, I've stepped away a lot in the last couple of years and, and it's just, it's a, it's a bad look. You know, my, my perception, like I said, that on me, I think a lot of people, you know, especially in the fan base world. Now, while we're talking about that, we originally met at a standalone wrestling and sportwalk beatdown, but most recently we saw you at a no ring death match against Casanova Valentine. Now, you came in already red hot, so much heat on you as soon as you entered that bar. Uh, you really were the antichrist and the most hated man in professional wrestling walking into Brooklyn. Uh, but one of the things that you did say uh, in that event... You said a bad word. Yeah, you said something bad, bad that made it even more uncomfortable. You since then apologized for making those remarks. But my question to you is, what do you think are the boundaries that wrestlers need to be mindful of in today's society? Well, I think, I think, as I said, you know, even the perception on me and I made some boneheaded decisions recently, I yell at people about stuff like that. You know, I mean, my students and my staff and like, even with, you know, we're CZW and like, I kind of go in on stuff like that. Like I'm very, you know, I don't want to be associated with that, but here I am in Brooklyn at one o'clock in the morning in a no ring death match with people drinking and, and saying things and literally throwing beer on me and a number of other things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a careless mistake. And, um, you know, in 2018, you can't do that. You know, people are very sensitive now and they have a voice now and it affects things in business. Like when I said a a bad word there, uh, I I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, you know, alienate anybody or be offensive to a certain, you know, sexual orientation. My intent was I was instructed to go out there and piss that crowd off as far as I could take them. And, uh, you know, that was what, you know, the booker or promoter told me to do. And, right. uh, you know, I just kind of figured I was in an environment and, you know, I got, I got lazy and careless and I made a mistake and, you know, it, it's not something you can take back. But if I would have done something like that five years ago, 
I don't think I think it would have been like, oh, okay, he's just getting heat. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and and another thing is specifically not only am I just a wrestler because there are other talents that month that said that on shows. Like I've watched them, you know, and on prominent shows in promos and and, and things that are just as bad. But I'm also the owner of a company. I'm held to a higher standard. You know, the perception on me is negative. I'm being watched. So, you know, immediately after I did that, I realized it was the wrong thing. Like, we, we talked about it in the locker room. And, and might I mind you, like, as we're in that locker room, we also, you know, there is someone of that sexual orientation in that locker room that I am friends with. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it was not – and he kind of just joked. He's like, it's you, DJ. Don't worry about it. And I was like, mm, I don't know, man. Might turn into something. <laughs> and it did. So, um I don't really know where that line is nowadays. And, and unfortunately that's changing the wrestling business. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's in a, like, I don't, there's no real true bad guys. And, and if you are a bad guy, it's, you're not a bad guy. That's like, Oh, we want to see you get beat up. You're a bad guy. That's go away. Now. Mm-hmm. Like you're not, you don't fit our culture. Now you mentioned social media earlier. I also think, you know, something like this, is not acceptable now. It was not acceptable back then, but because of social media, you're able to get that immediate response from the people that it may have offended. Um, so I think social media has changed a lot in professional wrestling. Well, the other thing too, is there's a lot of people who like with social media, you can hide. You actually don't have to have a, you have a voice, but you don't have to be you. You can hide behind a name. You can hide behind a photo. You can hide behind, you can have, your name could be John Cena fan 23. It doesn't really matter. You're right. You know, so, and, and you can have an opinion and you can say anything you want, whether it's justified or whether it actually affects you. It, it's just, that, that's how it is. But people now actually listen. That voice of, of social media has, has really spoken and has changed the wrestling world. And I'm sure we're going to get into more questions about that later. No, for sure, for sure. Now, you mentioned, uh, obviously, you're still the owner. Don't listen to any Wikipedia posts that you're not. But you're still the owner of Combat Zone Wrestling. What do you think Zandig would say about the CZW product today? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I would think John John would say we're a little bit softer than, than, than we should be. Uh, I think I think that, that's me putting it mildly. That's not how John would probably say it. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I would say he's soft. Why are you not out there? Why are you not pushing the envelopes and being the renegade and being the, you know, the anti-establishment kind of guys and making waves and, and just out there? Just do it because it's cool and and not care. You know, like, uh, I'll give you an example of something John said to me uh, one time that really sticks out. If you get caught, just tell them you didn't know. <laughs> you know, uh, he used to say that about the Athletic Commission in certain states. And he's like, just tell them you didn't know. He's like, they already know we know, but you're new. So you'll get away with it. You know, and it's one of those things where, like, I think after a while, we haven't been slapped on the wrist anymore. You know, after a while, it's, we don't care if you didn't know. And it got to how are we going to get to uh, – you can't be a renegade and have Coca-Cola go, yeah, I want to work with you. So um, I think he would definitely think that, like, why are you guys telling them, no, they can't do a thousand light tubes if they want to? Let them do it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because the fans are going to sit there and talk about it. And, and, and that, I think, is what John would say. I would think he would, he would say the product's a little soft in certain areas. Now, as the owner of CZW, is that your your vision to soften up the product? What is your vision for CZW? Um, to be honest, it's not about softening up the product. It's about getting it to a better platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the challenges I have as the owner, um, if you look at all the major companies out there, the companies who are buzzing and traveling and that are not like really independent, they're on television. And unfortunately, I mean really hard to get on television when you google czw and the first thing that comes up is ultra violent and it's guys hitting each other with light tubes and barbed wire and fire and syringes and all this other stuff and i've been a part of that so me trying to sell that to somebody is not easy and it puts you into a different demographic it would be great if if we could do the things like like that i really want to do because if coca-cola is sponsoring you you can go out because they have your back and you also start losing a certain market that very financially is popular. You know, I, I think a lot of fans don't understand. My goal isn't just to be cool. My goal is to make money. I have a mortgage. Mm-hmm. I got bills. I got, you know, I got, I got bills. CZW is not cheap. You know, it, it is not a cheap. We have to make money. And I don't want to alienate anybody. So, and my whole vision has always been something for everybody. If 
you come to a CZW show, give them a little bit of everything. You know, I love going to like diners, stuff like that, because if I want pancakes at five o'clock, I can get it. Right. You know, certain people live different styles of lives and, and, and they're, they're there for whatever. And you can get your fix here instead of a lot of companies that are very much like a genre. Like this is what they do. This is all they're known for. Like CZW has the stigma of deathmatch wrestling. Yes, we do deathmatch wrestling. But also, why don't you watch our best of the best show and watch guys like David Starr? You know, watch guys like Jonathan Gresham. You know, or guys like look at the WWE roster of guys that have been through our company that are phenomenal wrestlers. And it's just a matter of of where I can get it. And I don't think also another reason is like we said, society is changing. You can't have a guy like like back in John's day. You had the Rock and Rebel go out there and talk about black guys eat chicken, and you can't do that nowadays. You know, you, you, you can't because then you're going to have mistakes like I made, and and then you're going to get a backlash and alienate a certain certain thing. You know, it, it it's also where the the rules have changed. The athletic commissions have stepped in. They ain't playing anymore. They know who we are now. We're not just some underground little wrestling company. We're we're not that. They, we're no, you're for real. You screw up, you're you're getting busted. So it's you got to play play by the rules. So I, I think that's a big part of it. But again, my vision is always something for everybody. I want to be on television. I want to, you know, promote to a large market, you know, tell stories. I, I love, I love the storytelling aspect. I, I, I think I, I'm not a big like feature show. Like this is all we do is feature shows kind of guy. I'm a, Hey, let's go out here. Like, let's tell stories. Let's do angles and, you know, see if we can get people to generally care about, you know, the character. Now, if you're working on getting the CZW brand, to be televised obviously you're gonna have to make adjustments for it to be available for the masses the wwe has also fallen to that and people have not enjoyed the product as of late are you someone who enjoys the wwe product right now i enjoy certain aspects um i will tell you i'm a big fan of nxt okay Uh, i think the nxt product right now is is exactly like similar to my vision and what i like about professional wrestling and not just because, you know, a lot of the guys on the show are, like, my students or my friends or something like that, though. No. Or, guys, you know, guys have been from CZW. It's, I actually enjoy the way the product is presented. Uh, I like the way that it's put together. It, 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 it's very simplistic. The storytelling is phenomenal. I, I'm really into that. As far as the main, like, Raw SmackDown, like, I'm not as much into that as I am into, you know, NXT. Yeah, and a lot of the wrestling yeah. fans that we talk to or we um, hang out with are probably in the same boat you are where they think NXT is the superior brand. But you mentioned a lot of great people that have come from CZW, who the WWE obviously has has brought a lot of people from from the CZW brand. Now, as trainer, you've guided individuals like Adam Cole, Kid Osborne, Joe Gacy, Drew Gulak, Rich Swan, Shane Strickland, just to name a few. What is it about the training at CZW that has developed so many great individuals? I think, one, I have a different mentality than everybody else. I also have a great team. I know that, that I, I try to do things differently. I have I have different views on wrestling than most people. And What I are those views? Where, well, when it comes to wrestling psychology, there's a lot of formats. And, and like, you know, uh, I don't think a lot of fans or people listening to podcasts will understand what I mean by that. But there's, like, you go into a wrestling school and there's, like, oh, this is how you put together a match. Um, I don't believe in baby faces and heels. I believe in characters. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe, like, like I give the example all the time, is the Joker a bad guy? Again, the world has changed. Social media changed it because if the Joker's such a bad guy, why are there so many kids dressing up as him for Halloween? Why is mm-hmm. he selling so much merchandise? Like, no offense, the Young Bucks are the merch whores of the world, man. They sell more stuff than anybody. Yeah. But their characters are typically the bad guys. You know, you have guys like Roman Reigns and John Cena, and, and like, they are booked as, like, Captain America, good guy, personified, and, you know, all-American apple pie and all that stuff, and people are booing them. The thing is, is that the business has changed, and people relate to characters. And now with, like, Twitter and, and Instagram and social media, people like the bad guys. Some people just want to be the bad guys. Some, it, it's all about how you emotionally turn them and how they relate to you. There, there might be somebody you don't like, 
but you have something in common and you can find common ground. You know, I think a lot of wrestling is still stuck in that 1980s, early 90s mentality of, you know, Hulk Hogan's got to go out there and be the real American and, you know, things along those lines. You know, like even back in Vince's day, he used to name wrestlers because of the society. You know, Hulk Hogan was the Irish and Bruno San Martino was the, the Italians and things like like that's gone. Like society evolved. I also don't think that I stick to like one way. Uh, I have been fortunate enough that I have been trained and traveled the world many times over. You know, I can do lucha. I, I've been to Japan. I understand that very very well. I understand the catch style. You know, I understand strong, what you would define as strong style. Um, I also know why culturally things happen, and I understand that. And I think that's where I kind of beat into people's brains. My particular classes are not focused on the in-ring. Like, the in-ring will come. We all are taught how to take a back bump the same way. Like, everybody's lining up doing a bump. Right. Like, every single person, and they're all going to be different. I, I focus more on, on other things and the mentalities and how to work within the business. And specifically, I think that I'm very strong at that because I've made so many mistakes. And I didn't have somebody like me being there. Uh, you know, I like to say that my, my staff now of trainers are mentors. I'm not like your personal trainer who's like, eat this, lift this. I'm guiding you. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you make your own decisions, but I'm there to, to give you the best advice I can. And right now, with, with the CZW Wrestling Academy, I think we have the strongest group of trainers and one of the best programs in wrestling. It, it, it's, it's very strong, and, and, and I'm very happy with it. So I think that's one of the things that makes us different. We, like I said, we do things not traditional, very different, very out of the box. Is your um, CZW staff of trainers anybody we would be familiar with? Uh, well, the current I am currently the head trainer. I oversee the entire program from uh, from the dojo, and obviously with our Dojo Wars program and brand. I'm not sure if fans are familiar with that, but you can check it out on YouTube. It's basically all about the future. Um, I am assisted by former uh, superstar and and now CZW staffer uh, Jimmy Rave. I think uh, most people mm. probably remember Jimmy from. Uh, his days in Ring of Honor as well as CZW. He was, you know, with New Japan for a while. Jimmy's been around the block. He's been doing this for quite a long time. He has a very strong technical background. Um, Jimmy's one of the smartest guys I know. You know, in wrestling, we, we have a mind that is, uh, you know, very similar. We have a lot of the same thoughts. Uh, and some of my weaknesses, I think, are a lot of Jimmy's strength. Jimmy knows how to talk to people a little bit better than I do because I'm very excitable and, and passionate. Um, and then our next trainer is Joe Gacy. Joe Gacy right now, is, as we are speaking, is currently down at WWNXT. He's former CZW world champion, trained by DJ Hyde, uh, you know, came up in a class with guys like Adam Cole and Shane Strickland. Um, he's traveled the globe. Joe is probably going to be one of the next guys that you're going to see across the independent that you're going to be like seeing him everywhere and he's going to be a name. And, you know, he's slowly getting there now. And, and, and Joe has a, a great mind for the business. And, and he is very well versed in many, many things. So, you know, I couldn't be more prouder of that team. We have other people behind the scenes that we bring in for, uh, you know, more like weekly or monthly kind of seminary type thing. And like we work with Gracie Jiu Jitsu in Philly, Tyrone Scott and DeBasey in Philadelphia. They come in and do a lot of public speaking stuff for us. You know, we have affiliations with so many other schools in the area. You know, so it, it's just, it's a program unlike nothing else. And like I said, it's capped off with our Dojo Wars program. You know, once guys are ready, they have to go through everything from learning how to be a cameraman to doing sound to doing commentary to being a ref to, to editing shows, which is all important now in, in 2018 and, and understanding all that before you actually get into the ring and become a professional wrestler. That's a very interesting curriculum. That's awesome. Not only that. All those matches go up for free on YouTube, so they have the ability, you know, we help them with how they set up writing a resume and a demo package, as well as, you know, if you want to go to WWE and that's on your agenda, how to set up things for the Performance Center, getting them contacts, you know, so they can become extras at WWE for Impact and things like that. So it's, uh, we have a pretty great program with it. And, and then they have content that they have access to, not something that they, you know, they need permission. They can just go out and send a link. I mean, it, it's we have a great, great staff. We have professional photographers that work with us too now, so they get pictures done. And you know, that, that that's something that you know is very necessary in the wrestling industry nowadays. 
Of course. And then um, the other part I wanted to touch base is while we're talking about the training is women's wrestling is at a peak right oh. now. And you're doing your part to train the women wrestlers, but your training, um, some people might find it as one of the toughest for the women wrestlers. What is your training that has many people questioning your the way you approach it? I think with the women, I, 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 I don't I don't BS them. I mean, I have had some very well-known trainees from CZW that are currently out there. Um, you know, Penelope Ford is, is all over. Um, she's definitely the girl right now. We're not one of the next girls. Mm-hmm. She's got all the tools. I, you know, I, Kimberly and, and Mia Yim are, are, are obviously uh, – CZW, you know, DJ Hyde product. Um, I think Layla Hirsch, who uh, you're going to see a lot of her in the upcoming years. She's the next big thing. Brittany Blake. Is, there, there are so many girls, and why I'm a certain way about it, I, I'm not fake with them. I also believe that, like, the girls have to be good enough to wrestle the guys. Like, I tell my women, I'm going to hit you as hard as I'm going to hit anybody else. It's respect. You chose to get into the ring with a man. I'm not going to go in here and be like, oh, I'm going to take it easy because she's a girl. No, you are a competitor. And when I sell this to a lot of them, I literally walk around and now it's a little bit different because she's the WWE Raw Women's Champion. But I go, how many guys think they can win a fight with Ronda Rouse? And most of them go, well, Ronda, you know, like she kicked my butt or some of them be like, I kick her ass and, you know, things like that because they're, they're probably sexist or whatever. But Ronda would probably take like a lot of people and just hurt them. You know, yeah. she went toe for toe with Triple H at WrestleMania and nobody batted an eye. You know, but if that was somebody more in a in like a role like say Lana is, they would look at it way differently. But if it was somebody like Charlotte Flair, I, I don't think they would anybody would have a problem with it. So you need to be respected and looked at that. But then I also go back to the Ronda Rousey thing and go, why is she on top of UFC? Not only is she that badass, but she's also a blonde-headed, blue-eyed Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in professional wrestling, your body is a big part of what you do. That's why you have to go to the gym. Anybody that follows me on social media, the only social media thing I really do consistently is you will see my personal trainer and my trainer on my Instagram. I I am there three to four days a week, and I still look like I do. (laughs) You know? (laughs) These girls are going to go out and they're going to do, they, they got to learn about photo shoots and, and things like muscle and fitness and, and, and you know, the divas type of era. And, and like, they need to, they need to understand that that's part of, it. you know, there, there's a big part of this business specifically in women's wrestling. That's called custom, you know, or, or guys sliding in, you know, I'll use the Jordan Grace line, the, the DMs, like guys are sliding into their DMs. And you need to be prepared for that. And, and you need to be honest with them. I don't want to sugarcoat anything and cookie cutter it. You just need to be ready because if you can't be ready for this, if you're not strong-willed as a woman, if you look at most professional wrestling shows, there is one woman's match on most shows. Maybe, maybe two. And most cards have eight matches. So you're still way outnumbered. You are going to have to fight, scratch, and claw to become what you should be. And I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't segregate them. I don't like when the girls are wrestling, like specifically at my school, no, they're wrestling the guys. You're not getting out of doing it because you're a girl. I don't care. Like there's the door, you know, it's, you're going to have to do this. The girls are going to have to go through the same thing, same stories. You know, the guys are, yeah, there might be a little bit of other things, but they need to be prepared for that. And that's the only reason that women's wrestling is evolving. Because there are girls out there that have been around for a long time that are definitely the type of girls that I believe in. Girls like Mercedes Martinez. Mm -hmm. Girls like La Fisto. You know, those girls are the girls that, like, kind of paved the way and went through all the BS stuff. And the girls that I respect and the girls that I will sit here and I will go, like, like, I'll give you an example. So it's not out yet, but I might as well announce it because it's going to go out in a couple hours anyway. So we're doing, uh, like, an afternoon event at Arcade Death show. Layla Hirsch is wrestling Mercedes Martinez. Layla Hirsch has been wrestling less than a year. I believe so much in Layla, but this is a huge test for her. She's my apprentice, storyline-wise, and pretty much DJ Hyde's protege. So she's got to be ready because Mercedes ain't holding back on her. She, she's not. It, no. It's not going to happen. And at the end of the day, I'm going to go, okay, Mercedes, where do you think she is after that match? And she knows it. And Mercedes is not going to be like, oh, she's just some little girl and, you know, she's a greenie. And all. No, uh, uh, doesn't play that way. Mercedes, I, I, I told Mercedes, don't hold back. This, this, this is like, treat her like, like you're wrestling Miko Setamora. Mm. You know, if you want, go watch Miko Setamora. Miko's going to kick you in the face. 
you know, anybody who wants to wants my mentality of it, there's a great documentary you can find on YouTube. It's called the Gaia Girls documentary. Look up with Chibusa Nagaya and Nico Setamora and a lot of the great Japanese women did back in the dojo. They would beat the ever living crap out of you. They didn't care that you're just some little girl. And and, and that's a mentality. Again, I also don't want that like that that nice treatment of them. You know, I I am kind of ranting and, and circling here, but it, it's like you know, just because you're a pretty face or you're you know you're the one girl out of ten of guys, you don't get any special treatment. I got Maria Manic training, you know, with us. Maria Manic will pick you up and throw you around like you're a rag doll. She doesn't care. You have to respect it, and, and that's how I look at it. My apologies, I went on a rant there. No, I completely appreciate it and. And yeah, I think it's definitely that type of training that is really making a big impact in in women's wrestling. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, going to CZW, you want to offer variety. Now, with women's wrestling, do you think there's still an opportunity for that type of variety as well? Like to bring in a little bit of what that Attitude Era type of women's LA and women's wrestling was back then and mix it up with what we have today? Yes and no. It really depends on the mentality of the girl. Some girls are just not going to be as gifted in the ring as others. And some girls, look-wise, are not going to be as gifted as others. You're, you're not going to have Tori Wilson and Sable doing bikini contests anymore. You know, it's not, again, society changed. And, and, and it's hard to do stuff like that. There is still a market for it, though, because people want to see it. And if they want to see it, you know, somebody's going to try and put it on. And the problem is, is how society accepts it. So I really think that it's up to the girl. So I'll give you an example of people in the wrestling industry. I don't think Mercedes Martinez is going to go out there and do a bunch of TNA show off her goods. And Mercedes is a beautiful woman. Right. Okay. But hell no. But, but someone like Scarlett Bordeaux is going to be like, no, I'm sell I'm, this is what I'm selling. Pay to see me. And, and I, I think Scarlett's amazing. She's a very great talent. But Scarlett also knows that, hey, I'm not Mercedes Martinez. I'm going to go out here and, and utilize my other talents to, to get me where I need to be. I mean, just look at her gear. Look at what she posts on social media. Look at look at those things. And I, I think that there is a market for that. But the other thing, too, is I, I think, you know, that there is definitely a change in wrestling. Like, I would tell you in the next couple of years, I would not be surprised to see a female CZW world champion. It's just a matter of, the right girl. Who do you think you is know? ready for that and spot from your perspective, from your apprentices? Tessa Blanchard, Lefisto, Mercedes, maybe. I think Tessa's probably one of the best female wrestlers on the planet. She is the current WSU champion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she, I think she could pull it off. Maria Manic is definitely some of you I could see that in the CZW mentality because she's ventured into the deathmatch world. Um, you know, she's wrestling guys a lot. You know, her character is she's the man eater, basically. Um, I could definitely see her being, you know, that person. Yeah. And now you're someone who's known, just like CZW you mentioned earlier, is known for a lot of deathmatch wrestling. When it comes to the wrestler and being involved in that genre of wrestling, is there a desire to inflict pain on someone or um, feel that pain from it that goes beyond the art of wrestling? Not for me personally. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to ever injure anybody. I've done some of the dumbest, craziest things in, in wrestling. Like, there, there are some things where I'm like, I don't for, like doing it or I don't really want to do it, but I've done it. I don't think there's ever a mentality of like, oh, I have to injure this person when it comes to deathmatch wrestling. I think the mentality that I have is believability. Mm -hmm. I want it to look as real as I can get it to the point that that I, I that people believe. I look at professional wrestling, specifically like deathmatch wrestling, it's like going to a movie. You can tell when it's corny and when it's fake and when it you know, it's not real watching a movie, but you can also get sucked into that movie and caught up in it and get emotional about it. And that's really what I believe in. And I believe in that in all of wrestling, to be honest with you. But, like, specifically in the death match, you know, you got to make it look a certain way. You know, as a, as a guy who has done death matches and, and is actually still doing them, you kind of accept the role that you're in. you got to realize, like, hey, I am putting my body on the line. I am sacrificing this. This is going to suck. But I, I also know techniques and ways to do things and, and, and stuff like that. It's definitely, you know, it's definitely all about, about the art form when it comes to that. 
in your career, you've also wrestled some of the toughest wrestlers that many of us know in the business. Who would you say was your toughest opponent? And is there one match that you consider it as something that, wow, that match just really took the most out of my career right now? I would say the physically like toughest person I've ever been in the ring with that is a deathmatch wrestler is Masada. There's not another guy like him. Mm-hmm. There really isn't. I, I I I would I mean I think a lot of people would probably say the Necro Butcher. The the difference is is that Masato like Necro is a is a deathmatch guy and that's what he does and that's kind of what he's been known to do. Where you know he's a brawler, he's a fighter. No, Masada is a like Masada can do it all, and Masada is so believable and so like he's the ultra violent beast. He's that guy. Like he is scary, and um, I think that's definitely where the tough thing is. Um, there's probably been two matches that I would say have taken my career and, and been where I currently am. One is, is Tournament of Death 9, myself versus Thumbtack Jack. I think most people recognize that match if you're a Deathmatch fan. It was uh, it, it was definitely something at the time that was uh, ahead of its time. It was, you know, where I did the syringes with him. And, you know, I took a cinder block to the head, and the cinder block originally was supposed to be gimmicked. And unfortunately, TJ grabbed the wrong brick and knocked me out cold. Shit. And I still don't. Uh, you can watch the clip. There's tons of them on YouTube. It's there. Um, he basically hits me right in the head as I'm tied up in the ropes with a cinder block to the forehead. And I was out cold. You can see my hands go limp. I don't remember anything of that day. And the funny enough thing is I, I bought the company a month later. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I would also say KJ Death 14 with Matt Tremont. The final bump from that, we went off the top of the cage. He gave me a Death Valley driver. We went through a bunch of panes of glass and into a contraption. Now, under that contraption, there was padding. I didn't hit the padding. Uh, Matt, at that time, was about 300, probably 30, 40 pounds. Uh, Matt is a very, very big, large human being. And falling, I mean, he landed right on top of me as I hit the floor. Um, And if you go back and watch that match, you will see a good part of the locker room and staff clear and um, and come down mm-hmm. and, and check on us if you watch the tape. I mean, even, even as we're on top of that cage, me and Matt have talked about this in countless interviews and, and times, where we're up there and I'm going, take another step. If he would have stayed where he originally was and went, we would have got him pale. You know, it, it was we hit it like it was just happenstance. And then when I hit, Matt hit the padding and me. I hit the floor and I basically took a, you know, like a three story header of a Death Valley driver on my head to the mm. floor. There is probably one other big bump that I took that uh, I, I definitely know has taken a toll on my body. Tangled Web 3. It was myself and Greg Excellence versus uh, Joe Gacy and Sammy Callahan. Um, I took a bump off of the top of, uh, I, I'm going to say it's probably like a 16 to 20 foot ladder through a pane of glass and a barbed wire board. And the barbed wire board was supposed to catch me. And it did not. And I hit the concrete in the ECW arena. Man, my back has not been the same since. So, I mean, that is definitely taking its toll on me. And now as I've, got, I've gotten older, and, you know, there is a reason why I've been going to the chiropractor. Now, you mentioned Masada as your toughest opponent. Uh, when we had Masada on our show this past year, he mentioned that his relationship with CZW was non-existent. Now, as we approach Cage of Death this year, you're teaming up with him versus Matt Tremont and Onita. Can DJ Hot and Masada coexist? Uh, I, I believe so. Um, I mean, on, on, a, on a professional basis, uh, not that our relationship was non-existent. It, 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 it's business. And, and a lot of wrestlers don't understand things that, like, you know, we have budgets and, and like, you know, when you live in Texas and you fly to Philly and, you know, it's not cheap. <laughs> You know, we can only afford, we have commitment and, and things along those lines, and you, you have to make that work. And, uh, you know, Masada also had some personal demons and, and, and things along those lines and disagreements that uh, I don't think he was happy with. And, you know, we can only do what we can do. I mean, it's not like I have unlimited resources. I really wish I did. Because on, on, a, on a personal level, I will tell you, Masada is one of my good friends. On a professional level, though, I mean, I have known Masada and wrestled him in 14 different countries and the man has his demons and, you know, there are times where it's like, I just can't deal with this. I I have to move on. But I definitely think we can coexist. We're on great terms right now. You know, I think Otashi Onita and Matt Tremont are are in for a world of pain. 
Hell yeah. Now, this might be old news, but at this point, we have we, we have to talk about it. There's many people who've come on the show and, and have discussed it. So it kind of, sure. it's strange for me to actually be in this position because I never thought I would get the opportunity to address this topic with you. The GCW invasion into CZW. What happened? Um... So as many people probably know, uh, Brett Lauderdale is one of the owners of GCW. Uh, he had pitched to me for quite a while about doing an interpromotional angle. I declined it. Uh, we had a producer at CZW who's uh, very popularly known as John Carlo Didimo. Um, I will tell you, John Carlo, John Carlo is a genius. When it comes to video work, he's uh, second to none. One of the best uh, I've seen. Prop. Probably. Um, I don't know if many fans know, but he was hired by World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, he currently works there. Um, he was the one who started the Joey Janela everything. I, I, I will tell you, he is the guy. Um, he makes stars. He's very passionate. Uh, I can't really say that many negative things about him, except for this one instance, because I am definitely a John Carlo Didimo guy. And um, John Carlo has a very good relationship with those people, you know. He basically pitched me, and, and at the time, the head of creative was Sammy Callahan, um, this angle. And, and he was really trying to sell it because fans kind of want to see it. You know, it, it, GCW is, is, you know, kind of a, a, an older version of CZW. They were they're very underground, and, and there's a lot of bad blood there in other ways, a lot of bad business, you know. I mean, former employees, I mean, we, we, we get along, like we're like, I, I can call Brent and we can have a conversation and like, we're not going to, you know, talk like screw you buddy or anything. Like we're not going to get into that. Like, you know, we are comparable. There have been times where we're not, I did a show the night before for Matt Tremont's H2O and I had already shot it down. And Brett said to me, are we doing this? And I said, absolutely not. I said, what is the benefit to us? Because CZW in the past has done this. And I'm not talking about like, Hey, the fans like the angle. I'm talking about long-term effects. What is the benefit to us? And, and John Carlo was really selling me because DJ hide the wrestler's ego. It, it, like people assume that my ego is really big. And, and at times it is like, I do get full of myself. And, and like what was, was being pitched was, you know, for me as a pro wrestler would have probably been very good, but I'm also 40 and my career is winding down. I am, uh, I will not be wrestling much longer. So I, I didn't see a long-term benefit because when the angle has been done every single time we've feuded with a company, whether it's been ring of honor or IWS or whatever, CZW has lost part of its, its fan base and business has gone down. Far. Not popularity, but business. And that is where I've kind of started focusing. The next day was, uh, you know, cage of death. We new venue. Uh, we had issues with the venue. Um, as, as the main event was going on, uh, I also want to note, that Sammy Callahan was not there. Uh, Sammy was in New Japan at the time. Uh, he missed our biggest event of the year. I mean, he was calling from Japan, checking in, making sure things were doing. Sammy did his due diligence. Um, at the end of the night, uh, the main event did a spot where um, they did a fire spot, and it wasn't okayed. And uh, I was getting reamed out by the fire marshal. And as that was going on, I heard Nick Gage on the microphone. Uh, John Carlo let them in a back door, snuck them in and just shot the angle. When I got to the ring, I tried to grab Brett Lauderdale and Ricky Shane Page and Shane Strickland, who were in the match, stopped me. Brett smartfully got, got, got out of Dodge there. And I went to Nick Gage and, and I've known Nick Gage for, I don't know, 18, 19 years for a long, a long time. And Nikki said to me, John Carlo sent us. And you can kind of see me if you ever get to see this tape because it's out there somewhere. Um, I kind of freeze and look dumbfounded. And um, it, it was one of those things where then, you know, then there's issues. And then Nikki, Nikki's not going to stop being Nick Gage ever. You know, he's got to, I'm the man and all, like, he's got to do his thing. And um, one of my staffers called the cops because that's how I became the cop caller. You know, I mean, not, might I mind you, a lot of my staff has issues with certain people there, you know personally and professionally not going to get into that it's not really worth worth our time you know the next day I, I don't know if most people know but in my personal life I normally go away with my family right after cage death every year I've been doing it for probably the last five years 
you know, GCW publicly called me out and told me to show up at their show, and I wasn't even in the state. And then it just kind of got bad. And uh, then they moved to wrestling school right next to ours, like literally two doors down. I mean, it, it was fifty a matter of 50 feet, to be honest with you. You know, we uh, ended up getting released from that building because they were running events there. Anytime they stumble, you know, it was, we got blamed publicly, whether it actually happened or not. Fan base just, you know, again, the perception on DJI is negative. And then it got into like the boys and then I got tired of it. I mean, we use a lot of the same talent. I mean, most of their talent are former CZW guys. And most of them that they were using, specifically the deathmatch guys, are CZW branded guys. Not all of them, but most of them. And, you know, it was, it, it, it just became a bigger issue. And then you had talent publicly going out, burying companies and, you know, and, and things along those lines. And then, uh, you know, I think it also started because the original Joey Janela show, I didn't believe in it because it was a Thursday night. And, and that was a mistake. And I, John, I should have believed in John Carlo because I've been a part of these WrestleMania things for years. And Thursday night is always fail, no matter what we did. Um, but I also think that the perfect storm was Orlando, right place, right time, you know, right scenario. You know, it, 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 it happened and congratulations to them. And then, uh, you know, things just started getting bad and, and, and business wise, I just don't want to work with them. And, you know, people want me to fight and I can't win. If I go up there, I, no matter what, I'm going to be the bad guy. <laughs> so my whole mentality is how do you bury somebody? You don't put them over. At that point, Sammy Callahan had left the company and, um, you know, there was a creative change and, and I took back over and, and business wise, we, we took a pretty big hit. Uh, the venue that we were in for that day, um, you know, we lost due to that, that issue. We literally were thrown out of that venue because of, of what happened that day, which was not the plan at all. So, I mean, we had a lot of challenges we had to, we had to get over. And, and business-wise, it affected a lot of things, and, and, and it's kind of gone from there. I think since that point, um, Game Changer Wrestling has kind of evolved to be a different entity. And, and, and now they are, you know, they are, are superstars. And I just, you know, I, I just, I look at them and go, man, I'm happy they're doing good. Good for them. I just don't want to be associated with it. You know, I don't really want to have any crossover or do any angles or business. I mean, if that time comes, that time comes, but I'm not really feeling it. You know, but, you know, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Joey. I mean, like I said, like talent left. It's like, I can't have like Joey left. And I told Joey, I was like, look, man, I can't have you work for them and going, you know, screw CZW. And then next week coming, you're working for me. I was like, it's a problem. Like, it's a bad look, bro. And, you know, and, and it's hard for a promoter to tell the boys, like, you can't work somewhere. You know, it's not right. It's hard for me to go to, to talent and say, hey, look, I don't, I can't, I, I can't associate with this. Like, I can't. It's a bad look on us. You're either in on what I'm doing or you're not. I'm not, I'm not out here publicly going, screw this and them and blah, 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 blah. I'm not out here. And as a company, they're probably not doing it, but their talent is, you know, I, I can't do that. You know, if you want to be associated with that, cool. You know, I got no issue with you, bro. You, you can do whatever. And, and I think that's where it really got a little bad. And then, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago, I just stopped caring about it. And, uh, and now we're rebuilding. We're making new stars, and, and, and I'm, I, I don't think I've been this motivated in years. So, uh, to be honest, competition, like, you know, we compared it to when WCW formed the NWO. Vince got punched in the face, man. And now it's, it's, it's time for us to step back up and be CZW. And I, I think we got, you know, Cage of Death rolling around here. I think we're starting to, to get to that point, and uh, a lot of great things are happening. Yeah, it definitely has come up in conversation. Um, there's people who are – on different sides of the fences, uh, the fans one on one point are like right in the middle, and they would still, I think, want to see a CZW versus GCW event. Um, as someone who is very focused on what the right thing for business is, do you still? I know you said you you're not into it now. Do you see maybe in the future there still being the opportunity for CZW and GCW to have a working relationship where the fans could actually see this happen? I mean, I, I, I will tell you this. Um, I, I have no, no issue doing certain things with certain people. I think a lot of people think that I don't like those people or I have some issue, but it's a matter of doing business. Do I think that there's a possibility in the future of something like that happening? Oh, sure, yeah. I'm never going to say never. Um, I mean, I, I, I've been talked into some dumber things than, than that in the past. That's true. 
I just think that if if it is something that comes to fruition at some point, there's just got to be some kind of mutual understanding and respect and, and trust. And right now, I'm not there yet. Um, I don't know how they feel. I can tell you that I've had conversations with their management and basically, you know, what's the benefit to them doing it with us now? Like they're, they're putting on super duper shows. Like they're, you know, they're bringing in, you know, they got David Arquette and, and, and all that, like they're, they're doing these things, you know, and um, you know, every Joey Janela show and, 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 and things along those lines. Um, there's no real true, true branded guys yet. You know, if I wanted to book Schlack tomorrow, he'd show up, you know, I mean, G Raver, you know, all of them, if, if I booked them, they'd, they'd be here. It's uh it's, I don't really know how, how we would go about it, but I'm not, it's not that I'm not open to it. It's just that I don't see it happening right now. I think, like I said, a lot of things behind the scenes have to change. And, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do it. It's just that it, it's got to be all parties, and it can't be – we can't get into some, you know, pissing match with each other or some shouting match or whatever. I, it's like I'm not – I'm focused on me and my brand, and all I really want people to do is enjoy what we're doing, not be like, well, you're not this. No, we're not. So it is what it is. All I can do is focus on me and, and be happy with that. And I have to admit, in the conversation that I had with Joe Gacy, we um, we did talk about like what the future of CZW holds because we, as a fan, I did see it the, the decline going in. Um, but I feel like you guys are coming back up. There's a lot of great new talent you guys are investing in. There's a lot of great new stars. And you, you did cut a promo once right before your Casanova um, No Ring Death match where it was like, you know, CZW makes stars. And, and that really resonated with me because when I look at the CZW roster now and the new people you're introducing, you know, you're giving those opportunities to guys who've been wanting that opportunity, who really are going out of their way to prove themselves. And, and I think that's great. I think that's what CZW has always been built on. And to be honest with you, like I said, I, I think that situation with them and some decisions I made, like I said, I haven't always made the right decisions. I think the problem with CZW was I was in a, I was in a funk and I got punched in the face and I got up and I, and, and I, I took my time. And then I said, you know what? I'm not being me. It's time for me to step up and do what I do best. And I make stars. And, and and you know what? There's a bunch of young, hungry guys out there that have been starving for an opportunity. Now it's just a matter of, like, getting them over and, and getting our crowd to accept them. And I think if you're watching our shows right now and watching what I'm doing, yes, KG Death is a little more of a feature show and, and, and things along those lines. I get it. That, that's the, the WrestleMania, you know, Super Bowl show. But, like, if you look at what we're building and the guys like the young, dumb, and broke guys, you know, Jordan Oliver, who just keeps delivering after delivering after delivering. He's a homegrown CZW Academy, you know, kid straight out of the school. I mean, and some of these kids that are coming out of the school, they're, they've got it. You know, guys like Gary J. Uh, Gary J's been around a while, just nobody's really given him an opportunity. And now all of a sudden he's out here and people are talking about it. Or like Mitch Ballin, another guy straight out of the school. You know, giving guys like Big Scare Dan O'Hare the opportunity to step up in main event, and he's killing. And, and instead of kind of keeping them stagnant, you know, really going in on some of the ideas that I have with guys instead of going, ah, I don't know, man, and being scared and, and, and not taking those risks. Those are things that are, are a thing of the past for me. I think right now, I, in 2019, you're going to see a lot of new talent come in, and you're going to see a lot of veterans with them. And, and those veterans are going to help ed get them over and make them and, and do things. You know, you see the rise of guys like MJF. You know, Shane Strickland had Rich Swan. Rich Swan had Ruckus. You're going to see a lot of guys in the future who are like, you know, just the guy, guys taking over. It, it's it, it's time for them to step up. It's time for a new breed of CZW. You know what I'm saying? To to really be the guys. Well, DJ, thank you so much for uh, joining us on a shot of wrestling, letting us know a little bit about your career, what's going on in CZW, and then opening up a little bit about, uh, you know, that conflict between CZW and GCW. We have a lot of new things. The year's still not up. You mentioned Cage of Death, so give us some information. It's literally on the horizon. Where is it? What time? Where could I get tickets? Uh, you can get tickets at czwrestling.com. It is Cage of Death. It is one of the, if not the biggest independent wrestling show uh, in the country, you have it main evented by 
Ricky Shane Page taking on Mance Warner to crown a new CZW world champion. You have a tag team tables title match between the rep and the blackout. Shane Strickland versus Rich Juan versus John Silver in a three-way dance. You have Otoshi Onita and uh, the bulldozer Matt Tremont taking on myself, DJ Hyde, and Masada. There are so many other things listed. Jordan Oliver versus Casey Navarro for the um, CZW Wire Championship. We also have an afternoon extravaganza. Atashi Onita will be signing, taking photos, autographs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we're also going to be playing the Eagles Cowboys game live at 4 p.m. Doors will open at 3:30. We're going to have some uh, other afternoon events, meet and greets with the CCW roster. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy things going on. Out there. <laughs> and if we wanted uh, so to continue to of- follow you and CZW, where could we do that? Um, you can follow CZW at Combat Zone on any platform, social media. Me at DJ Hyde underscore one. You can just find me anywhere you go and. You know, if you have questions, tickets, you want to become part of the program, you're looking for training, uh, you know, you can email me at djhyde at czwrestling.com. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity to really pick your brain about a lot of the things going on in professional wrestling. I appreciate our conversation and being part of the show. Uh, We still have last call, so hang tight, and we'll talk to you soon. This is the most controversial man in independent wrestling. The Larry God, DJ Hyde, and you are listening to The Shot of Wrestling. Stay tuned for after this episode for The Last Call. All you have to do is scribble out the sun. Cut the ceiling, let it spill its guts. Get stop these fish and succumb to me. Let me tell you. Masonic here, and if you want to listen to more shots of wrestling, go listen to them at B Plus Player Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I need to announce it's last Last call call at at the the bar. bar. Oh, all right, everybody. We have made it to the end. And just when they say we're done, they bring us back in and we're still here with DJ Hyde. Now, this time we're going to play a little word association game. So, DJ, the first thing that comes out of your mind when you hear this name, just let us know. Are you ready? Whenever you are. And away we go. Go. Boulevard Bullies. Hilarious Drunks. <laughs> Brandon Kirk. Young Mox. Brett Lauderdale. Asset to the business, uh, becoming a better person. Cody Rhodes. Genius. Danny DeMonto. Oh. Uh, Danny DeMonto. Um, I don't know what the word is. Danny's Danny. <laughs> 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 He's just. Danny's just Danny. <laughs> he's 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 cold-hearted player, I guess. The cold-hearted player. That's right. Uh, Joe Gacy. One of the four pillars. Joey Janela. Uh, game changer. MJF. The next Ric Flair. Woo! Masada. Scary. Maria Manic. <laughs> the man eater. Mike Quackenbush. Genius. Shane Strickland. Future. And finally, Vince McMahon. God. Well Next said. <laughs> well said. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on A Shot of Wrestling. Hey, baby, I hear the bell ring in hip tosses and body slams. Oh, my. And maybe you seem a bit confused. Yeah, baby. But I got you pinned. <laughs> but I don't know what to do when I see them with that golden case. They're cashing it in. Authority all in my face. What is a man to do? Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>